you guys have asked for it. This is the geodatabase talk. So this will be a series of uh, podcast and uh, maybe five to ten minutes and where we just talk about an aspect of, of the geodatabase in every series. Stay, stay tuned. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from IG on 3 Podcast, and welcome to another Geo Database talk. It's on another. This is the first, actually. And uh, as you as you guys know, uh, I don't really prepare for this. It's just just a freestyle, free talk. I would just hold my phone and just talk about a topic, and the topic today happens to be the Geo Database, something you guys actually asked for. So uh, this was uh, as a result of the uh, slightly popular ArcGIS server talk uh, episode where we just discuss about the ArcGIS server technology. This will be something similar, uh, around maybe five to ten minutes uh, an episode, uh, just to talk about uh, an, uh, an aspect, an area of the geodatabase. Right? So we'll just, uh, we'll just just pick up a talk, pick a topic and just talk about it right and you guys you can have, ask your questions and suggestion for the next uh, episode of what do you like to know what do you like to uh, see not see listen <laughs> all right so yeah uh let's get to it we will discuss in this episode what is a geo database So what is a geodatabase? I usually do not like to define something without explaining first why did we come up with such term or technology. So like if I want to define something or or, add, or or explain something, I always slightly just like revert back and try to explain why do we have that. There's always a reason for everything that you see in life. Every technology, right, is there to solve a problem. So geodatabase, why, why do we have that? And what problems did we solve? So we go slightly back to the days of uh, shapefiles. Shapefiles are, are, are a technology. It's, a, it's a invented by Esri. And uh, it's essentially, think of it as a, as a file, as a CSV file with... With has a header, right? That has the first row, and a, and just rows. A very simple thing. So every file is essentially a table or a class. So I can create a, fee, a, a shape file called cities that has a name, an object ID or F, FID. I think they called feature ID back then, and a shape field. And this shape field was if it's a point, there's an X Y. If it's a line, there is a bunch of points with their segment. If it's a polygon, there is a bunch of rings. And, and that's that's basically it. That, that was the reason we created that, right? It created that, Israel created that technology or, or that file. Just to, I want a way to store location data. And guess what? It became really popular because it's very simple. I can crack open that shape file and I understand what's in, what's in it. And it became really popular and used in a lot of places. Problems with that, right? We created that thing, but there's always problems associated with it. You didn't see it back then, 20 years ago. So the problem with shapefiles was it, it works really great if you're a single user, right? And it doesn't perform really well if you have like millions and millions and millions of data <laughs> and the reason is just because it's a file single file right doesn't really work well and uh, with with a single user you're good right just fetch that data and you're done however if multiple users want to read or 
write, uh, like update that shape file, update that record. Like uh, I want to add a new piece of information in this uh, poll uh, shape, shape file. Uh, only one person can really do that, right? So we moved up. It says, okay, when we want to move to something that is multi-user editing, and even before that, I, I want to do a lot of, I want richness in, 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 my, uh, in my database or location-based uh, uh, information uh, system. So we have moved to, so look at that. There's something called a database. Oh, why not just use a database, right? But the problem is there are a lot of flavors of databases there. So there is access, the database. I think that's the first type of the database, the geodatabase. Uh, version was on top of uh, Microsoft Access, which is like a, it was a file-based again database. It was a single user mode, but it works great. It's like it has it has the database semantic, it has asset semantic, right? Uh, you can uh, you can atomically create a transaction, do an undo redo. We 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 tried to do all these uh, functionality on top of the Geo database, but then we moved to the database, and then. We said, okay, there are multiple databases, but we can't really. Oh, there is in SQL Server. There's this type of spatial element in Oracle. There is Oracle Spatial for the location, and there is no single way of communicating between all these databases. So what Isri did is created this layer on top of the database, and it's called the Geo Database. So that's just like the simplest way I can put things in. And the geo database layer, this 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 crust on top of the database, allows us to to have like a single API to communicate with this uh, platform essentially. So essentially I don't Theoretically, you do not need to know what is the underlying back-end database. You, you kind of do, but it simplified a lot of work. So if I am, let's say, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about multi-user. Let's just talk about the geo database and the access, the access files, you know, which, which the access database, which has been obviously deprecated now. But that's the first uh, geo database that has been released. And it allows us to start, okay, so this is a database, right? And to create a geo database, uh, you have to call uh, from either from an Esri product, you will just go to ArcMap or Pro, and you say, hey, create a geo database for me. And when you do that, we know, we start, we connect to that database, and then we start creating some internal tables Right, that ta these list of tables will then be used to to store metadata about the geo database. A lot of a lot of uh, information about the database itself. This will allow us, for example, now if I create, let's say, a file geo database or an access geo database, right, or even an enterprise geo database. Right? If I create a class, right. With that class, I can store information about that class, and very, very vital information for for me to allow me to start enabling a lot of functionalities on top of the geo database. Right? Let's talk about editing, for example. Editing is a very popular thing. It's like if I want to do editing on a, on a file geo database, which is a proprietary geo database, it's a file based again, but allows you to do like it scales more than a shape file, so you can store you can store a lot more than a shape file. So I think the Access Geo database has a limit of four GB versus the File Geo database. Has, you can put like a lot of there. I don't know what's the limit of that, but I think there's like almost a terabyte worth of data in the Geo File Geo database. But yeah, so, so that's the general. So that's that's why. 
the geodatabase was created to, to abstract the back end storage. And uh, to, once we start abstracting that, we can add really cool features on top of this layer and the, on top of this API to do the editing part. I can, uh, I can do undo and redo functionality, things that doesn't really exist if you think about it in a database, right? If you, if you start an, uh, an edit session, right, you create a feature and you start undo and redo, what, what, what Esri does at the back end is it, it tracks these edits. And then if you save, it will start to commit these edits. If you discard, it will, it will discard these edits. So it has to do these transactions in a very uh, agnostic way of the back-end database. The reason is to support a lot of other databases. That's why the geodatabase layer came into existence. And thus, uh, and thus you can see that you, have, you can have a geodatabase on top of Oracle, geodatabase on top of SQL Server, geodatabase on top of Postgres, and then uh, uh, DB2 and a lot of other platforms as well. So obviously, there are you get more features based on what type of geodatabase you will be connected to. So go back to our question: What is the geodatabase? A geodatabase is essentially a layer on top of your database that will allow you to do uh, multiple transactions on top of uh, your API, and it will allow you to start working with the geodatabase agnostically of the, of the back-end database. So it gives, you, it gives you a lot of features, regardless of the storage back-end. All right, so to summarize, a geodatabase gives us a lot of functionality when when communicating directly with that API that layer that API that we created on top of the database that is the physical raw database gives us a lot of functionality that we can do at the, at the application level uh, mainly and I'm gonna just talk about just in general the geo database including the enterprise one of the main features is uh, long transactions we're going to discuss long transactions in another episode right transactions versus long transactions slightly different so it's like uh, versioning that's another cool feature in a geo database right in an enterprise geo database but it's still it's still nevertheless the geo database and uh, yeah this gives you like high isolation so you can uh, you can create a version and then you can, that version will be completely isolated. You can edit that version, you can uh, uh, make changes to this version, and then the parent version, which is the default in this case, will, will just move away and then you can reconcile and post your changes. And you have to think that these application level to geo databases if you can think of it as almost like an application on top of the geo of, of, of on top of the database and and certain application know how to talk to this ArcGIS server is one of them ArcGIS uh, ArcMap or Arc Pro needs know how to talk to this database and know how to read this table to do all these different features and yeah uh, that is all for us today Guys, I think the next uh, episode we'll discuss more about the geo database. Yeah, do suggest if you want to see uh, what what topic we want to discuss more. I have something in mind, but definitely uh, stay tuned for the next one. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Goodbye. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app free for iOS and Android.